The American Thoracic Society has published an official clinical guideline on laboratory diagnosis of fungal infections in pulmonary and critical care medicine in the Society's September issue of the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. The guideline covers the diagnosis of invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, invasive candidiasis, and the three most common endemic mycoses, blastomycosis, coccidiodomycosis, and histoplasmosis. The 11-member panel that produced the guideline conducted a systematic review of medical studies on diagnosing fungal infections, published from 1980 to April 2016. Diagnostic methods for fungal infections include antigen testing in urine, blood, and bronchoavialar lavage fluid, serological testing to detect antibodies to fungal components, and nucleic acid-based assays using polymerase chain reaction approaches. The panel asked four clinical questions that clinicians face when they care for patients with suspected fungal infections. Using the Grading of Recommendations, Assessment, Development, and Evaluation Framework, or GRADE, the panel made a series of recommendations based on those questions. Question 1 asks, Is serum and or bronchoavialar lavage galactomannan testing sufficiently accurate to guide therapeutic decisions in place of histopathology and or fungal culture in patients with impaired immunity suspected of having invasive pulmonary aspergillosis? In patients with severe immune compromise, such as those with hematologic malignancy or recipients of hematologic stem cell or solid organ transplants who present with unexplained lung infiltrates suspected of invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, the panel recommends the use of serum galactomannan testing. In patients suspected of having invasive fungal diseases, including those with a negative serum galactomannan but strong risk factors for invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, or positive serum galactomannan but confounding factors for false positive galactomannan results, the panel recommends bronchoalveolar lavage testing with galactomannan. Question 2 asks, Should diagnosis of suspected aspergillus infections in severely immunocompromised patients be based on the application of polymerase chain reaction? In patients with severe immune compromise, such as those with hematologic malignancy or recipients of hematologic stem cell or solid organ transplants who are suspected of having invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, the panel recommends the use of blood or serum aspergillus polymerase chain reaction testing. In patients with severe immune compromise, such as those with hematologic malignancy or recipients of hematologic stem cell or solid organ transplants who are suspected of having invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, the panel recommends the inclusion of aspergillus polymerase chain reaction on bronchoalveolar lavage testing as part of the evaluation. In patients with severe immune compromise, such as those with hematologic malignancy or recipients of hematologic stem cell or solid organ transplants who are strongly suspected of having invasive pulmonary aspergillosis, but in whom polymerase chain reaction testing for aspergillus is negative, the panel suggests consideration of biopsy and or additional testing with or without additional polymerase chain reaction or galactomannan testing. Question 3 asks, In critically ill patients with suspected invasive candidiasis, is the beta-D glucan test alone sufficient for diagnostic decision-making? In critically ill patients in whom there is a clinical concern for invasive candidiasis, the panel suggests against reliance solely on the results of serum BDG testing alone for diagnostic decision-making. Question 4 asks, should diagnosis of the common endemic mycoses be based on serology and antigen testing? The panel recommends the use of histoplasma antigen in urine or serum for rapid diagnosis of suspected disseminated and acute pulmonary histoplasmosis, where timely diagnosis and treatment are paramount to outcome. The panel suggests the use of histoplasma serologies in immunocompetent patients with suspected pulmonary histoplasmosis. Adding histoplasma antigen to serological testing might improve the diagnostic yield.
In patients with appropriate geographic exposure and illness compatible with infection or pneumonia due to blastomycosis, the panel suggests using more than one diagnostic test, including direct visualization and culture of sputum bronchoalveolar lavage or other biopsy material, urine antigen testing, and serum antibody testing. The current evidence cannot support a single best test as being sensitive enough to be ordered in isolation of other testing. The approach should be tailored based on the severity of illness, the clinical context, and availability of tests. In patients with suspected blastomycosis, the panel suggests that serum antibody testing specifically directed against the anti-BAD1 antigen for blastomycosis be used along with clinical and epidemiological data to establish the diagnosis. In patients with suspected blastomycosis, particularly in immunocompromised patients, the panel suggests that urinary antigen testing for blastomycosis be used, along with clinical and epidemiological data to establish the diagnosis. In patients with appropriate geographic exposure and illness compatible with infection or pneumonia due to coccidiodomycosis, the panel suggests using more than one diagnostic test, including direct visualization and culture of sputum, bronchoalveolar lavage, or other biopsy material, urine, and serum antigen testing, and serology. The current evidence cannot support a single best test. The approach should be tailored based on the severity of illness, the clinical context, and availability of tests. In patients with suspected coccidiodomycosis, particularly in immunocompromised patients, the panel suggests performing urinary and serum antigen testing to aid in establishing the diagnosis. In patients with suspected community-acquired pneumonia from the endemic area, the panel suggests initial serological testing with close clinical follow-up and serial testing. Due to the increasing incidence of invasive fungal infections, clinicians must be attentive to the serious complications they can cause in immune-compromised and critically ill patients. Application of any guideline information must be integrated into the overall clinical context for an individual patient when confirming the diagnosis of invasive fungal infection. Find ATS guideline implementation tools and more on our website.